In this video, we're going to look at three patches that explore some of the possibilities of adding an LZX Fortress to your Vidiot. Fortress and Vidiot are great partners. They actually replicate a lot of the same functionality. Both of them feature a vertical and horizontal rate oscillator. Both of them have colorizer features. The Fortress has a low frequency oscillator, while the Vidiot has an audio envelope follower. These similarities make them natural patching partners. The biggest difference is that while Vidiot is entirely analog, Fortress is based on digital technology giving them very different looks and feels. Before we start patching the two units together, we need to make sure that they're sharing a sync signal. So I'm going to turn my fortress upside down. On the back, you see your sync controls. You want to make sure the switch is set to terminate. Then you take a sync cable. You can use any RCA composite cable for this. Turn it back upside down. And just thread this through. I'm going to take this and plug it into the Luma output on the back of my video. In the near future, we'll have a video exploring some more synchronization options, but this is by far the easiest way to synchronize these two modules. In this video, I'm going to assume you have a basic working knowledge of both the video and the Fortress. There are other video resources available on this channel for each. So for this first patch, I'm going to start with a basic pattern on my video. This is just showing some simple diamonds. And I'm going to start taking the oscillators from the fortress and using them to modulate the oscillators of the video. So my fortress one output, I'm going to plug into the first oscillator on my video. And I can show you what that is starting to do. Maybe I'll turn the uh, animation off just for now on the fortress. So as you can see, oscillator one is having some effect here. I could also use the sync input. And this is going to give me a little bit of a different result. So those are two options I have. There we go. And then I'll take the two output, oscillator two from my fortress, and plug that into Oscillator 2, FM. There we go. Now if you cross these around the other way, Oscillator 2 from the Fortress will be able to modulate Oscillator 1 on the video. But Oscillator 1 on the Fortress will not have as good of an effect on Oscillator 2. Turn this down. This is because frequency modulation requires the modulating oscillator to be at a lower frequency than the oscillator you're modulating. So I'm going to go back like so. Start to adjust our different amounts. So now if I set the oscillator here to animate, we start to get some animation in our video pattern. So in the video, I'm using the keyer. And this is keying the pattern, the diamond pattern, the combination of oscillator one and two. What I'm going to do next is take my DAC output on Fortress. Remember, this gives you a black and white version of the Fortress output before it hits the colorizer. And I'm going to use this to invert that key. This is going to add an extra layer of complexity and integration to my patch. Also, we're now starting to see the result of the different program modes. So if I switch through these modes, I'm going to start to see different results. So I'll set that to about halfway. And from here, I can play with my colorizer controls. Start to get some cool different patterns and results. And if I change the oscillators on the fortress, I'm going to see the pattern change dramatically. So this is giving me a cool mix of analog and digital oscillators working in concert together. And of course, I can go back and change the FM amounts, start to get some different variations of this pattern going on. And 
And the last thing I'm going to do here is take the RGB outs from Fortress and plug them into the RGB ins on the colorizer of the video. So now, as I adjust my analog controls here, I could start to make use of the built-in palettes of the Fortress. So as I switch through the different palettes, I'm going to get different results over here. But I could still use the manual analog colorizer to adjust those palettes. So this allows me to do analog colorizing effects after the preset palettes on the Fortress. Now if I really want to get wild, I can take one output from oscillator 2 and put that back into modulating oscillator 1 on the Fortress. So now we have a really heavily intermodulated patch. I'm just going to play with some different options here. And we could switch through different program modes and change our animation speeds. Go through our different ADC logic settings. And just start to play around. So this is a great basic patch to get your Fortress and Vidya integrated together. So in this case, we're using the Fortress oscillators to modulate the Vidiot oscillators, and then we're using the Vidiot colorizer to post-process the palette outputs from the Fortress. In the next patch, we're going to kind of flip this whole thing around. So now let's look at a slightly different way to interact with these two modules. Again, I'm going to take the RGB outs from Fortress. And the big reason I'm doing this is because Fortress does not have its own video output that I can view. Only Vidiot does. So if all you have are these two modules, this is the way you're probably going to want to have this set up. So I'm going to turn these all the way up, turn these all the way in the middle. So here we're just seeing the basic output of Fortress. So I'm going to bring all my controls on my Fortress down to zero. Bring all of these down. I'm going to make sure my program is set all the way down. The rest of the controls don't really matter in this case. Then I'm going to take the circle output of my video and plug that into ADC1 on the Fortress. As I bring the CV control up, you'll start to see that circle shape being generated by the video driving the analog to digital converter. This acts as a sort of stepped keyer and gives you a really cool colorization effect. And as you can see, as I change the video pattern, I get some changes in there. So now we're using the video oscillators essentially to drive the colorizer on the Fortress. I could take ADC2 input and use a different version from the video, such as the hatch. And again, we'll see that now add to the colorizing effect. And I can change how much or how little I want. I can also go on ADC3 and change the way that ADC2 and ADC1 are being combined. And now I can take oscillator 3 from the Fortress which is my low frequency oscillator, and use that to begin to modulate the oscillators. So I'm going to turn the FM up a little bit. Oscillator 3 is very slow right now. But I could speed it up. And we can get different effects based on how we set this. Set it up very fast or fairly slow. So now that I have this basic setup, I can increase the control voltage to ADC3. This is going to use that same third oscillator to now drive changes in the different logic modes. Again, I can turn that up to get something a little bit different. So I could also take oscillator 1 from Fortress, take the output there, plug it into the inversion control, Set this to key on my video. 
That gives us just another level of interaction. And now we can also start to play with the palette controls on the fortress and the RGB colorizer controls on the video to get a bunch of different colorizing options. We can adjust our frequencies. And there you go. Another great option here would be if you plug in an audio source, you can then use the ear output to modulate any other parameter on either of the modules. So that's another way to go about cross-patching the Fortress and the video. In this last patch, we're going to look at a slightly more complicated way of getting the two modules to interact. I'm using the back panel connections on the video to get the Luma processor involved. So let's break it down and look at how this patch works. So to start, I have my Fortress set up. I'm just going to patch this in to show you what it's doing. And my Fortress is generating a basic pattern with a little bit of animation. And I'm going to take the DAC output and use that to synchronize the first oscillator on my video. So I'll just plug that into the sync control. And you can start to see what that's doing. I'm going to move this so we're just looking at oscillator 1. I'll try to make this a little bit stronger. There you go. So here we're just looking at oscillator 1 from the video, and you can see it's syncing to that DAC output of Fortress. And I can change the frequency and get different effects. This is a cool effect in its own right that you can use in a variety of patching scenarios. I'm going to get oscillator 2 involved by taking its output and patching that into the voltage control input on oscillator 1 of the fortress. And I can switch through some different waveforms to get different shapes. So I think I'll keep it on the sine wave. So now you can see we're taking oscillator 2, using that to modulate oscillator 1, taking the full output from fortress, and using that to sync oscillator 1 on the video. It certainly sounds confusing. And I can switch through these different outputs and adjust this to get oscillator 2 involved in some different ways. And we can look at some different shapes here on the video. We'll keep it at that one. And you can adjust to get some different effects based on the frequency of your oscillators. And of course you could change the oscillator frequencies on the fortress as well. So we're already getting something pretty nice and complex. But I want to show you two final tricks that will let you take advantage of the Luma processor. So I'm going to take another Fortress output, in this case the red channel, although you can take any of these three. It should work just fine. And I'm going to plug this into the back of the video where the camera input is. So now that my Fortress is plugged into the camera input, I can access it anywhere where the camera input is. I'm going to switch this over to the Luma processor, just so we can view right now. Okay, so now you can see in the Luma processor that I'm getting the output from the Fortress. If I switch this to different outputs, you can see what's happening here. And again, it doesn't really matter which of these outputs you choose. I'm just going to stick to the red. So now that I have my Luma processor involved, I can adjust the brightness, contrast, etc. And what I want to do in this case is use the keyer to solarize. I'm going to turn the noise off for a second so we can see more clearly. I'm going to make sure my solarize switch is set down to key. And then I can adjust my key threshold until I start to get these nice solarized edges. I can adjust my detail knob to fine tune that. But I still don't want to lose the pattern that I have coming from my video here. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is take the Luma output from the back of my video, and I'm going to use that to adjust the keyer threshold on my colorizer. So now we get that solarized signal back involved in the mix. To add a little bit more complexity, I'm going to take the oscillator 1 output from my fortress and use that to invert the key. So then we get a little bit more dynamic color mix. 
And finally, just for fun, I'm going to take one of the other RGB outputs, in this case the blue, and I'm going to plug that into the blue channel on the colorizer. This will just bring in a little bit more dynamic coloring effect. So now I'm using the full capabilities of the Luma processor, the first keyer, the second keyer on my vidiot, both oscillators on the vidiot to generate a pattern, and of course the full faculties of the fortress. If I switch through the different program modes, I'll get different results. I can adjust my animation speeds, adjust all of my different oscillator frequencies to get different effects. And of course I can switch through these different modes on my vidiot, both on the color channel and on the Luma channel. Switch through different palette modes. So this setup gives me a super flexible way to generate complex patterns. There's a good deal of interactivity between the two modules, and starting from here you can continue to patch different things. There's no limit to the interactions between these two modules, and I encourage you to experiment freely and wildly. We hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, please leave any questions or ideas for future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.